The, the perspective shared by the Honourable Deputy Minister really puts the conversation uh, in, a, in a very, very broad light. And I'm glad that you highlighted some of the projects that we're going to be working on. But I wanted to, uh, Your Excellency, to quickly come in here and set the tone, of course, from your side. We know that globally right now, in as far as the plans that we've had for globalization, COVID has really disrupted and tested a lot of relationships in terms of international cooperation. Can you perhaps just reflect on the new approach that we need to take of how do we tighten some of these cracked relationships now due to the economic turmoil that we're experiencing globally? Um, thank you very much for that um, interesting question. Um, well, I think um, we have to deal with COVID. It's a new factor in uh, world politics, but I think we also have managed in the past two years to find new ways of collaboration. I mean, video conferencing is not ideal, and uh, I'm very glad also that we have the opportunity to meet here and uh, to exchange uh, our views and our positions uh, directly, and uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, very necessary, but I think uh, we, um, we can live with disruptions like, um, like uh, COVID, um, and I think we also have to deal with disruptions like uh, the uh, attack of Russia on Ukraine, which uh, has uh, brought uh, to us, at least in Europe, a new dimension of uh, replacing uh, gas um, um, and uh, traditional fossil fuel gas with uh, green hydrogen. So I think the pressure on uh, alternatives is even bigger now than it has been like uh, six months uh, ago. Honourable Member, in terms of the support we're receiving from uh, Germany from an economic uh, cooperation perspective, when you compare to obviously most of the other countries, we know Namibia is a friend to all, the Anna Line. Uh, but what gives provide is that confidence for them to be able to sit on platforms like this and be part of the long term economic development plan. Thank you very much. Um, the cooperation between Namibia and Germany is not only starting now. It has started long before, and uh, we have uh, many Germans among us. And uh, in Namibia, we speak German, <laughs> and uh, we share a lot when it comes to the German culture. Uh, we, in our schools, we also have got the uh, German as, as, as a language, and that makes it very unique. Uh, as uh, Namibia and German, because we have such a, 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 a relationship that has started long ago, and that has made Namibia and German to be uh, um, to be related in such a way that no country can really compete with Germany when it comes to the relationship with Namibia. And of course, yes, and. Um, with the support that we are getting from them, we, as I have alluded to earlier, that we really um, uh, appreciate that support. And they, Germany is not only offering support to Namibia in terms of uh, the green hydrogen. They have been at the forefront long time. During the liberation struggle, we, we benefited so much from Germany. We even had our own children that way based in Germany, and uh, uh, on a lighter note, I would share that uh, I remember when the kids came back, one of the child was saying, I live German, I stay German, I am German, I can't stay in Namibia. And that is how we are related with Germany. Thank you so much. Uh, Your Excellency, focusing a little bit now on the green hydrogen question, what would you classify as the success of green hydrogen uh, for Germany? Well, it's not a success, it's a necessity. I think, um, I mean, looking at the, at the world and looking at uh, uh, the industrialized, um, we, we are polluting the world in a way also that um, we, are, we cannot continue like that if, uh, as, as before. I mean, Paris is, so to speak, the, uh, the, the, um, the point also where the, uh, uh, the world community agreed to limit uh, uh, global warming to uh, at least uh, two, uh, two degrees, maybe 1.5 degrees, and that needs action. So uh, now we are in a 
in the situation to decarbonize our industries, to, to de decarbonize our lives uh, in, in many respects. And, uh, and it's clear also that, it's, uh, that a country like Germany, which is the third largest uh, economy in the world, uh, has to lead that process and has to find solutions with partners who can uh, uh, contribute to that. And, uh, and I think what happened in the last uh, 12, 18 months in Namibia is something uh, I think it's, it's absolutely extraordinary that, uh, that people come together, that uh, the leader, under the leadership of His Excellency the President uh, and, uh, and his cabinet, um, that uh, rules were established to uh, create uh, this uh, green hydrogen hub. And, um, and I mean, if you talk to anybody here in, uh, around the, uh, this room and outside to say, you know, like, uh, would you think that Namibia is going to be a leader in green hydrogen uh, technology uh, or, or production uh, in, in the years to come? I think uh, you had a very small um, uh, consensus rate in, in, uh, in at that time. Nowadays, it has changed dramatically and, and, and fundamentally. And, uh, and I think uh, now the task is really to... Uh, to bring about it and uh, it's, it's, it's an important point that you're making on the consensus. I think the concern also from especially from one of the companies was is this a long term pipe dream? Is there really such high demand for downstream for green hydrogen? I think uh, if you if you look at the um, at the experts um, 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 I say forecasts um, I think now we are producing like 90 million tons of uh, hydrogen, grey hydrogen, uh, per year uh, worldwide. And the need for uh, green hydrogen in 2050 is maybe about 500 to 600 million tons. So, so it, it's uh, like four or five fold what we, all the green hydrogen we can produce. Of course, that is not uh, limited to Namibia, which has uh, maybe the best or among the best preconditions also to produce it, but it's, it's of course also left to, to countries like Germany to produce its own high green hydrogen. No, but only uh, the fact is that uh, for a developing price, we don't have a price for green hydrogen at this moment. We have to develop the market, we have to create a, a, world, uh, um, um, a world market for green hydrogen. Uh, but uh, that will be a thing of the, of the future. But uh, we all know also that we cannot stay and drag our feet, but we have to move forward. And, uh, and I think it's great to see that Namibia uh, is, um, is moving forward. And I think uh, the Honorable Tomal Wendo, when he went to Germany in March, I think he, uh, he experienced uh, this uh, seriousness and, uh, and also the interest of Germany as a, as a country and uh, to, to move forward together with Namibia. And let me just say one thing. Uh, I think government and government is one side also, but I think one has to underscore that it's the private sector which has to bring it about. So I think all the conditions also needed for good investment in Namibia which, um, which fulfills political aims, that is clear, but I think the private sector and the conditions under which a private sector is really prepare to invest into Namibia is very, very important. Thank you. I've got a lot of questions coming up for that, and that, that, that relationship with the private sector. Honorable Sulemi, you mentioned a little bit earlier, of course, that there was, uh, the pilot project was launched. We had uh, tech also on stage here yesterday. But the big question is, are there off-takers already for what the uh, pilot projects are going to produce? Oh, thank you very much. Um, you know, one thing, uh, one must think about when the off-takers assume not to be ready. When uh, there is no demand, demand is created. And it all depends on the strategies that we are going to implement to make sure that we have as enough off-takers as possible. Of course, uh, in, on the cooperations that I have just alluded to, uh, for Germany, Qatar, Belgium, and the Netherlands, we already have some that have indicated that they are interested in the, in the, in the, the off-taking uh, uh, agreements to happen. 
and also on the uh, business delegations that we are engaging. And as, also, as we engage with international communities, we market ourselves as Namibia, we market the green hydrogen. I know for sure now each and every country <coughs> in the world knows about Namibia because of the green hydrogen. And now and then, at the ministry, my minister can testify to that, we receive so many investors that are interested in partaking into the green hydrogen uh, uh, projects. Therefore, off takers, of course, will be there. We will make sure that if they are not interested, we make them interested. We make them interested. <laughs> In, in, in terms of that, still staying with the private sector, of course, and corporation. Your Excellency, how do we ensure, because we know, of course, that from a government perspective, the priority is the people, there's a social uh, a mandate. But for private business, the aim is profit. How do, we, how do you come to the party? How do you get uh, that, that, that relationship with the private sector so that we make sure that both needs are met at the end of the day once the projects are finalized? I think the Green Hydrogen Project is probably um, an example where the definition of profit is uh, maybe a bit um, has to be different, differentiated. So uh, <clears throat> I think there's short-term profit and there's long-term profit. And I think the green hydrogen uh, area is not for short-term profits; it's for long-term profits. Um, and um, and uh, a project like uh, Hyphen also is uh, I think the layout is for 40 years. That means also that. Uh, Banks are not able and not willing also to fund such a huge investment or if they are not sure that this um, enterprise is going to live for 40 years in order to get back their money and uh, some, some uh, interest as well. It's clear also that a long-term investment needs other areas and other aspects to be, um, to be covered than just, let's say, a, a quick buck. And, um, and I think there we as, uh, as Germany and we, I think we are not into the quick buck um, industry anyway. Um, and I think we understand that, and I think also the private sector understands that this is more than just producing green hydrogen in the MIBA. It is a project to bring people in Namibia uh, to, a other, to a different level to address the, the question of inequality uh, uh, in this country to combat uh, hunger and uh, to find jobs for people uh, to uh, um, to address those uh, those issues. And uh, so I'm confident also that green hydrogen is not um, a short-term thing, but it is something which takes into consideration those aspects as well. Thank you very much, Excellency. In conclusion. Honorable Shibunga, from your side, perhaps a parting word for the audience here. The parting words would be, Namibia is ready for business. We have all the ingredients that it takes to, for good investment. Our country is stable. We are peaceful. We have sound financial systems. We have all the infrastructure. We are rated the the, the, the best infrastructure when it comes to Africa, and uh, we are welcoming all the investors that are interested in this uh, green hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you very much for that intervention. I just want to as my parting show, just remind us, of course, that Namibia is a country of the world law. Uh, and in terms of our foreign policy, we are a friend to all. We are non aligned. And uh, Germany, of course, has been that friend through uh, thick and thin. And hopefully, going forward, we are going to improve on that relationship. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for making time. Thank you so much, Honorable. Round of applause. For you. <laughs> uh,